again. So Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone. Welcome back. So before we get into the BigQuery environment, I just want to quickly show you this Excel file where we have the same data set that we used in the last video and the link will be in the description in case you want to download the data. Now the requirement here is I want to sort this data in an ascending order first and then I would like to create a new column by the name of previous close and what this field will have is the prior day closing value in it. So obviously since this is the first day, first one will be null and the second day onwards, this will have the previous day value in it like this. Okay. Till the end. Now doing this in Excel was pretty straightforward, but what if your data is a big data and it exists in the BigQuery environment or a SQL database, then how will you do this? Because there should be a way where you can identify at each row, what was the value in the previous row. Now, this is what we're going to achieve today in SQL by looking at a specific function, which is part of the window function within SQL known as lag. So let's just quickly jump into BigQuery and see how this is done. Okay. So I'm in the BigQuery window now and I can see the data set here, which is the Apple stock data. In case you want to see how to actually import this CSV file into BigQuery, you can watch my other video where I've explained how to import a CSV file into your BigQuery. And it's a very straightforward process. You should be able to follow it just by watching it. Now, let me open up an editor window. The first thing that I would, I would like to do is I would like to write a select statement and select the columns that I need. In this case, I need the date column and I need the close column from Apple stock. But I would like to create one more column by the name of previous close. And to do that, I'm going to write a specific function called lag, which is part of the window function of SQL. So I'm going to say lag and the parameter that it accept is the column name where I want to apply the lag function. So in this case, I want to apply the lag on the close column because I want the previous close value. Then obviously, because this is a window function, we're going to write an over clause here. And within over clause, I'm going to write order by because I want to first order the section that it's creating on the basis of date column. And I'm going to name this as previous close and I'm going to order this entire table by date column. Now, if I run this, if you see what this has done is it has First of all, sorted the entire data set. And then it has also sorted the section that it created using the over clause and finally got the result, which was just prior to the current row. So suppose while executing, it comes to this row, it checks what was the value in the previous row and then assign that value to this previous close column. Now, because we only wanted the values from the previous row, we just use the default parameters, which was only the column name. But what if, you want the value from two days prior. So let's say you're on 11th April here and you wanted the value from let's say 7th April. Okay. So what will you do then? In that case, you need to add one more parameter here and with the lag function, you just insert one more comma inside the bracket and enter two because you want the value from the row, which is two rows prior to the current one. Now, if I run this, it will fetch the results which were appearing two rows prior to the current one. So I have 165 here and two rows prior was 172. That's why it's showing as 172. And obviously the first and second row will become null because it would not be able to find any value prior to this row. If you want to backtrack more rows, all you have to do is just increase the number here and it will fetch the records accordingly. So I hope this was clear. This was again a function within the window function family of SQL. And this can be really helpful when you're trying to, let's say, calculate a variance between the previous day and the current day and want the user to see what was the actual value which was there in the previous day. So I hope this was helpful. In case you learned something new today, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you do not miss any videos that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.